Hello and welcome to Storyboard. This is an unusual episode for two reasons. One, Pavni Mittal is not here. She is at Khan and uh, creating wonderful content for next week. But we've got some wonderful content for this week as well. With me for the entire show is Samir Singh, Executive Director of Personal Care at Hindustan Unilever Limited. We're going to explore with him where advertising is headed. Welcome to the show, Samir. Hi. Very nice so to be So first, here. Uh, you know, you're the one behind wonderful work such as uh, Help a Child Reach Five, uh, the Roti Reminder and so on. Now, five years ago, we wouldn't even have called that advertising. <laughs> so where is advertising headed? No, I think it's, it's, it's uh, headed in the direction that people often keep discussing. I think the interesting thing is that uh, while on the face of it, a lot of the formats and the visuals are changing, actually the basic principles are not because what you used to do earlier to make good advertising is exactly what you have to do today to make great advertising which is you have to be very clear about your brief have a very inspiring proposition brief the right creative and then take some risk uh, and i think that's what we did with with help a child reach five uh, we were very clear about a brand that was about saving lives and my brief to the agency was you know can you create something which will make people cry uh, because that's the only time people are moved by something as mundane as hand washing. Right. And that's what the Gundappa film did, that it got sort of people to care about something which was so mundane and say something as, uh, as, as something that we take for granted like hand washing can actually save people's lives. Uh, so I think we talk a lot about video and content and digital and all that stuff, but I think those are just forms of execution. Uh, in the end, if you're doing the basics right and really taking some risk, but also giving a lot of clarity, uh, then, then you'll do well. You know, uh, from the moment I saw Help a Child Reach 5, you know, I said, hey, this is interesting. Levers is getting exciting. You know? <laughs> and uh, then the next time that happened really was when I read about uh, your content day. You yeah. know? And uh, you're investing a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of management effort and yeah. time in content day yeah. so you know a help us understand what content day is and b help us understand what you hope to achieve out of content day no i think I, i'm very excited about content day and i think that's just a phrase for again a very simple concept which is that at their best great brands tell stories uh, and in india stories are told best through popular culture through films music movies sports so on and so forth and I think it's trying to get them together in a very organic way such that the brands are not forced into all this content and actually consumers or the audiences love seeing them. But at the same time to make it a bit more structured because I think so far we've done it uh, and various companies have done it and so have we but it's been one off, it's based a lot on chance etc etc. And I think what we've done with content day is that we've gone with very very specific and clear briefs on the brand on how to activate them. So we picked out some 11 brands. We worked for two months getting the briefs in the right place and getting all our agencies aligned. And then we briefed the top 40 content creators in India. Uh, and then we gave them time and, and I think they got so excited they came back with I think almost 300 ideas, 40 of whom we shortlisted and had them present directly to the brand managers and the brand teams which work on these brands. Uh, and then the top four we showcased with the, with the senior management of HOL, including Sanjeev. And I think that uh, created a huge deal of excitement, but it, I think it's also a commitment that Hindustan Unilever will support uh, content creators uh, in a way that actually encourages risk, but lets us come up with content which also furthers the brand stories. Right. One, one of the challenges with content as opposed to say, straight advertising is the measurement of on measurement of ROI on, on. so how, how will that be a challenge somebody's going to measure the impact of all these things I think uh, the way I see it is that uh, something like this take help a child reach five or take all the work that we've done on content uh, it's impossible to measure it directly in terms of the sales uplifted gave because it's not a consumer promotion so the way I look at it is what does it do to your equity what does it do to the key attributes that you are chasing for a brand? Uh, and what does it do to salience? Like do consumers sit up and take notice? Because for brands like ours, that is always the biggest issue you face, that consumers will not notice you because they see so much clutter on television. 
but equity attributes and salience if you can measure this pre and post and it's going up then actually it's paid back for itself sure but now with uh, multiple say uh, pieces of content working for the same brand at the same time which can happen yeah so how would you know which element is working which is not working i mean that it presents its own set of complications doesn't it i think i think it does but uh, in a way anand actually uh, the way i uh, see it is it's it's like you know a brand today is is much more liquid uh, in the way it operates right so, so it seeps in into various content into various media etc and you can't you can't avoid that the best way to do is to actually embrace that uh, fully from from sort of every angle and i think say for a brand like uh, lakme yeah we've been we've been running it with a lot of consistency but we also do a lot of innovation on it we have a property like the fashion week uh, which generates huge amount of content on digital so on and so forth but we also have uh, you know lakme salons then we have lakme innovations then the lakme brand ambassadors do something then we put out a lot of stuff on digital in terms of do it yourself tips to beauty etc and i think in the end a company like ours or or a brand like lakme first takes a leap of faith i don't think everything unlike say some elements of press or tv advertising gets into an exact measurement of roi i think some of these other things you just do because you know it makes sense and over time you see it shifting your attributes Uh, so I think that's the way we we sort of take it from brand to brand. You know, uh, so far in these few minutes that we've been talking, you've uh, used the word risk uh, twice. <laughs> uh, you you just used leap of faith. Yeah. These are very unlevers kind of words. You know, <laughs> ten years ago I couldn't have heard these words. So yeah. what what is it about Hindustan Unilever now that you are? Th- I mean, it's not the only conversation I'm having about yeah. risk or leap of faith. So what is it? Uh, more empowerment of the managers, or uh, how would you? Or just a recognition that the world has changed. I I think definitely uh, and you know and now I'm going to just start sounding very pompous and immodest sure, why not <laughs> but, but I've actually experienced it being in uh, you know handling a global brand uh, in uh, various global brands for the last 9 years and now coming into this job uh so exactly what you said a lot of empowerment of experienced marketers so in in, in a strange way we've let decision making come to people who have done a lot of campaigns who have made a lot of mistakes in advertising and these are the people now the single point decision making who sort of run uh, new advertising or who take final decisions uh, and the moment you empower such people uh, who have got typically sort of 6 to 9 to 10 years experience in advertising these are people who will also rely a lot more on their judgment not just on quantitative preview scores So I think uh, in a strange way the process of uh, having a particular briefing of always having a rule that the head of the creative and the head of the client has to be there in every meeting there are no meetings happening on the side and you know people are killing off all the risky ideas and finally what you talk about is like the lowest common denominator so I think all those processes over time have helped and obviously some great work has been done by the global brands you know whether it's dove or life boy or uh, or magnum etc and i think all that has created almost this culture of intelligent risk taking but based uh, you know uh, like i heard someone once say it's about thinking inside the box which is the most powerful kind of creativity because what is happening is that we have a lot more premium now in unilever on consistency on running a brand you know our greatest brand dove we've run it 60 years on the same proposition the basic bar of soap has never been relaunched and therefore there is a lot of premium on consistency and once you define a brand personality and the proposition in a very consistent manner then within that you can take a lot more risk you can do a lot more different things you can from sketches to camera shy to metamorphosis you know dove can do all those wonderful things so i think it's a, it's a mixture of all that coming in while you there's a new unilever and a new hindustan unilever and in this risk taking and and so on it requires also the change in your agency partners mm. you know they have to think differently and and they've got to suddenly also learn to take risks and mm. you know take those gambles so are you seeing that coming from your agency partners uh i am i think uh, i think i would describe it in two ways i think when i find some of the agency partners 
deliberately go uh, to saying, look, I'm going to think digital uh, and then come up with stuff, I almost feel the output there is not all that great. I feel the best stuff comes up when the best creative directors in the agency uh, think what they are comfortable with, a lot of times that is TV, but once they have an idea, they are then allowed to really uh, sort of uh, 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 explode uh, the way they bring forth that idea. And, and that's where I think digital has liberated us. Because in digital you can think two minute films and three minute films, you can think lots of different kinds of videos, different kinds of content, etc. Uh, so what I find is that yes, our agencies are coming up to the job, they're doing a great job. Uh, but like for us, for them also, it's about focusing on what they are good at rather than artificially trying to behave like, like some boutique agency and you know, because those strengths are different and I think we use them in different situations. Nice. Now you said boutique agency, which uh, gives me lovely food for thought. Uh, the sense one is getting is a, you, again, Levers and Hindustan Levers, Unilever, they're open to ideas coming from outside and sort of fixed Yes. Uh, list of vendors. Yes. So, uh, how, how does that affect uh, the, the marketer's sort of prioritization? I think it, it makes life much more exciting. Uh, I think it makes it a little bit more unstructured, uh, which, which sometimes makes you uncomfortable. Uh, but I think we need that kind of discomfort because, you know, it's the biggest cliche to say that, but consumers sure. are now moved far ahead. And I think that's what this content day was about. Uh, we were interacting with the set of uh, production houses, people who make feature films, people who do radio, RJs, that usually actually we don't come into contact with. But the fact is our brands are so iconic, so ubiquitous, that if you just talk to one kind of creative person, I don't think that is enough in today's world. And, and which is why uh, I found content is uh, so exciting, because it's actually the start of a process. So to answer your question of how does it affect marketing, this is almost a commitment for us, not just for the next one year or two years, but the next five to ten years, that we will be ready if you have an idea on a brand which is organic, which doesn't irritate consumers or artificially place your brand in a movie, uh, you know, in the most crude way, but which is sort of uh, inbuilt into the movie, you know, like, uh, like we had... Uh, with a movie like Two States, we had uh, Alia Bhatt playing the Sun Silk brand manager and, uh, and actually, you know, talking about hair and, and the way the brand was integrated there or, or the way Balki wrote uh, Life Boy into Shamita. You know, he wrote it in the script and then sort of came to us. Those are the kind of uh, integrations that we are looking at. Uh, or building properties like Lakme Fashion Week or the Tresemme Red Carpet, which we can do over time. You know, they used to be close up Antakshari. So we are, we are looking at those kind of iconic properties. Right. One of the things we are not seeing yet, and hopefully we will see, is riding the wave of live popular culture. You know, something which is trending on Twitter or social media and so on. Mm. And you know, you need to brands getting on to, on mm. to such mm. conversations. Mm. So are, are you thinking about stuff like that? And are we likely to see it? Actually, uh, we are doing a bit of it. I think some of the great examples on digital when uh, Vim uh, gave away the, the, the iPhone right. to the person who got, uh, you know, ordered an iPhone and got a Vim bar. Right, right. I saw we that, were, of We course. were quick to move. I thought the, the, the well, band team did an amazing One job. can debate that. That was some hours, you know, live meaning on yeah. the fly, you know, like yeah, uh, think, during Super Bowl or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. so I think uh, even when that whole uh, color thing happened, uh, you know, is, it, is that dress uh, right. golden color or white right. color? Dove was there within, I think, a... Uh, a couple of hours right. uh, on Twitter, etc. I think, again, something there is something to do with the nature of the brands. You know, we are not so much about lifestyle brands sure. or sports brands, etc. Uh, but I think there is a culture again of entrepreneurship, of empowerment, of risk taking, and and thinking within the box. Thinking within the box, because Absolutely. you know, in the end, you don't want to do creative stuff for the for the sake of creative stuff. You know, you want to do stuff that will build the brand. That is my philosophy in life, you know, I'm here to run a business, Absolutely. not to make creative stuff, you know, so. So t tell me, how will it pan out? What is the future of Content Day? How will you look back, uh, you know, six months from now and say, Content Day was a success, how would you do that? I think so, if I look at, uh, out of all the 40 ideas that were presented to the brand teams, 
uh, I think the brand teams have come out for at least 15 of those ideas saying done. We want to do them. Right. Uh, now, of course, there will be a right time to do them and there will be the right pace to do them. So we've not set any artificial targets about saying you have to do this and that. But I think over the next few months, you're going to see them getting crafted and then we'll see how it actually does because in the end it should move your equity your key attributes and it should get you noticed so i think we learn and go along but even in the past from the examples we have i just feel this is something that is going to become part of the way we work you know while this is beautifully exciting in the sense of what you're trying to do with content partners uh, you have defined the content partners you know you've invited them now suppose there's a content partner who thinks he should be doing work for one of your brands and you've not called him. So uh, does he or she, uh, can they have access to you and pick up the phone and call you Absolutely. or something? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. So I, that goes without saying, because I think if someone has a good idea uh, on our brand, uh, we want to meet them. Right. So how do they get in touch with you? They, they <laughs> ring a bell or how does that happen? <laughs> they, they write on our website, they get in touch with uh, our media team. Right. Uh, believe me. It won't take too much time to, so for someone to get in touch with us. Yeah. So, I mean, another challenge, especially for brands such as Unilever's brands, is uh, getting content in all the languages. Because finally, a lot of your, your you know, most important uh, categories are sold in, in non-Hindi yeah. states. You know? So, how do you deal with content in, say, a Tamil or a Bengali or a Malayalam and so on? No, I think, uh, look, I think that's a, that's a great idea because what we have done uh, is Hindi, English or probably Marathi specific because it was done in Bombay and, and, and that is still sort of 60% of, of what we would put out. Uh, but whatever, replicating this say in the south uh, or in the east uh, etc or, or within some of the southern states I think would be a great idea because I don't think we fully tapped into it. Right. And one, one of the problems we've had in India for not nothing to do with uh, Hindustan Unilever is that the quality of print advertising has sort of mm. taken a nosedive. Mm. Now, are you talking to content partners in the print area as well to enrich uh, content in, in print? No, I mean, I couldn't agree more with you because right. uh, I, think, uh, uh, I think more than uh, the overall quality of print or the ideas, I think it's just firstly the quality of the copywriting, uh, which for me is, uh, and it's not just an Indian issue. I was in Singapore for the last nine years and you know, the copywriting there as well uh, has, has not been as good as what we, we have seen on TV and, and YouTube, etc. And, and I think there are two ways that we are dealing with it. One is that uh, we talk a lot, I, in particular I'm talking a lot with our agency partners, saying how do we get a set of people, uh, b because I find the quality of uh, creative directors who do our stuff for TV of another magnitude when it comes to the, uh, you know, the quality of the print. So how do we bridge that gap? Is it about getting people from outside or getting more of them to write stuff, etc.? And I think the second is because I work in the beauty industry, a lot of my business is beauty. It's also about crafting some of the stuff with our partners uh, in the magazines and the beauty editors, etc. Because some of the stuff that is written there for women is actually very, very persuasive. Right. Uh, and it's presented in a very persuasive way. So Samir, uh, while the changes are there on the content creator side, do we need the marketer to be differently sort of wired to deal with the new changes? I think that's an interesting question. I would stick my neck out and say no. Uh, the reason being that I think, like I said right at the beginning, when forms change or media change, you don't change the brand or the brand manager. Yeah, because in the end to do great advertising, you need someone who is creative, but still logical, who's deeply immersed in the brand, but still is connected to the outside world. You, know, you need a set of those qualities that don't change given that you're doing TV and digital. Now, of course you need younger people who are more connected, etc., etc., and they know what's happening, the latest in digital, etc. I think sometimes we overdo that part of the equation and maybe start hiring the wrong kind of people. I, I really feel that the people who, the young people who work in my team, uh, and you know, I've come back to India after nine years, I've been extremely impressed with the quality of their understanding of the brand, how well they are connected into the digital world, 
and how comfortable they are expressing their views very, very openly in front of sort of senior creative directors or, or, or in meetings. And I think you need that kind of risk taking and just putting yourself out there uh, for a person to become better and better. So uh, the final question, Samir, do you think young people will be better served if they thought of themselves as future content marketers rather than as marketers alone? Yeah. I think both. Right. I think both because marketeer, because I just told you the kind of qualities that are required. I think content marketeer because for me, uh, when I look at someone who runs a brand that is that sells to so many millions of people and those millions of people consume popular culture with passion and the brands are, are, are sort of things that sometimes they take for granted. Though they love these brands, they don't think about them all the time. So you need therefore brand managers who are steeped in popular culture. You know, I want a brand manager who's watching the latest Hindi TV serials on television even though that might not be her first choice on television so she can watch master chef but i also want her to watch the uh, bati or hum you know so uh, i want someone who's genuinely interested in sports that the world is uh, that that indian women are watching or you know where they are getting into sports in a particular way or reading the same newspapers or having a very good idea of what the particular vernacular or language newspaper actually looks like uh, and I think uh, HUL in particular does a good job grounding people in that way. So in the past, we used to do it by sending them for a rural stale stint. And, you know, I went through all that where I learned this is how the real world lives. And there was a lot of empathy because actually the people I met were far more evolved than I was. You know, so I lost that whole thing of I'm marketing down to someone. You know, it was like marketing to, to, to my mother uh, or to my sister. And, and I think the same thing is now happening in a slightly different way with how popular culture is consumed. So I think that's the only thing that I would put. Uh, Wonderful. So today we're talking about what content they could deliver to you. Maybe six months from now, we'll talk case studies Absolutely. that we'll be watching. Thank Look you so much, Sami. Thank you so much. Very good to Thank talk you. To so, uh, you know, that tells us that elephants can dance. We're talking about India's largest marketing company and they are talking about getting into content in a huge way. And to all those who are working in advertising and not working as a partner to Unilever, here's a chance. You heard it from him. Send in your ideas, send in your thoughts. And who knows, you could be a vendor partner to Unilever.